do not put any company debt on a credit card. Never try to start a company by loading up your credit cards with a bunch of debt. That is crazy. Just in case you don't know me, I'm an ancient nerd, 269 years old, and I've been in business for 450 years. Okay, all joking aside, I started my first business when I was 18 years old. Last time I worked for somebody, I was a bouncer in a nightclub. So I got a bunch of experience, too much experience, running businesses, starting businesses, having many friends who are business owners, having friends who are now partnered with Google and other major players, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So let me just say, one of the big mistakes people make when they're starting off their business is they get into debt with credit card debt. This is a crazy thing that you should never, ever do. You never use credit cards for long-term debt. You have to assume that any business debt is going to be long-term debt because it's going to take a while before you figure out exactly how your business is going to work. It's going to take a while to figure out the business model. You have to assume that you're going to make mistakes. You have to assume you're going to have to make changes and pivot. You'd be surprised how different your business will end up being once you get it working, getting it off the ground. This is especially pertinent if you're new to business because business, businessing, biz, businessing, running a business, building a business, conceiving of a business is a skill set. It's a set of skills and like anything else. And it's just as complex as writing code, by the way. I've done both, quite a bit of both. And in some ways, business is harder because with code, you write the code you instantly see if it works or not. It works or it not, or doesn't work. Whereas business is not so obvious. To make a business work, there might be a hundred little things that have to be done properly and layered together uh, for your business to work. And um, I cover all this in my entrepreneur course, shameless plug. Anyhow, and so business is difficult, it takes skill set you have to develop and I'm not discouraging you I think you should do do it I think you should get into business but one of the big mistakes mistake number uh, 69 is that you load up your credit card with debt to finance the business you've heard stories where people do it and you've heard the unicorn in rainbow story where somebody actually is super successful doing this this is very uncommon this is very uncommon most people boo and remember, as I've taught in other videos, the number one reason, actually the only reason businesses fail is because they run out of money. As long as you have money, your business is in business. So you have to preserve your money uh, like you're preserving your life. The money is the blood of the business. It's the air of the business. It keeps it going. And the reason you don't want to use credit card to finance your business is because the interest rate is horrendously high. The interest rate is horrendously high. 15, 20, 25 percent. That will kill you. That will kill you. So what you need to do, if you need money to start your business, and I would be very, very, very reticent, very careful about going into debt to start any business, what you should do is you should uh, either... Borrow the money with a personal loan of some sort where your interest rates are going to be far, far lower. That's number one. That's one option. Number two is that you find suppliers. Maybe you need special equipment. I don't know. But you can find suppliers where they will uh, lease you the equipment at 0% interest rate or 1% interest rate, 2% interest rate. Whenever I look at something... I typically buy cash. I have an old expression, one of my tips I've given people, if you can't afford to buy it cash, you can't afford to buy it. This is my general rule. I'll make an exception with business. Sometimes you have to borrow, but in that case, if you do have to borrow, and if you're a new business person, even if you think your idea is guaranteed to make you 10 bazillion dollars, even if you're guaranteed that in your mind, because you're a noob, you have to assume that you're going to make all kinds of mistakes. What I would do is I would find some investors, people who can afford to lose money, and partner with them. Two reasons why you'd want to do that. Number one, because they have experience. 
Well, you'd assume that you have experience, you know, unless you have a, a relative who just saved all their life. Uh, I wouldn't borrow from them. I would find an experienced business uh, entrepreneur who can not only cough up the money, but also uh, give you a lot of advice and speed up the whole process for you. So that's the, I would be the first thing I would do, pop, pop, really. You know, if you need the money, if you absolutely have to get money to start your business, which sometimes is unavoidable, I would get a partner who's got cash and hopefully experience. They will also be a good gauge about whether or not they feel your business might be good or not, right? Because they're, they're experienced. They're not going to be right 100% of the time because you never know what business, but at least they're going to have a better idea, you know? And most experienced entrepreneurs won't be jerks and uh, will be honest with you. That said, some people are going right now, I know some people are going, yeah, but my idea, my idea is so good. I don't want them to steal my idea. Uh, yeah, let me tell you something. Ideas are worthless. It's execution that is hard and that's important. Ideas, there's so many good ideas. I can give you 10, 10 good ideas in, in five minutes. Executing on those good ideas is the hard part. That's the trick. That is the difference. And ultimately, you don't know if your idea is going to be good until you get it out there in the marketplace. And I can guarantee you, you're going to have to change a lot about your ideas. First thing I would suggest, if you need money for your business, number one, double check to see if you can get away without spending money. See if you, you know, save. Uh, maybe you could just do temporary rentals for a few days to get things going. Who knows? Next thing you do, find a, an investor, an experienced partner. If you can find someone, that'd be great. The next option would be to get a personal loan where your interest rates are far, far, far lower. Lower. Another thing you can do is lean on vendors who may have uh, leasing programs with very low interest rates or zero. So for example, this cinema camera I bought here, I'm filming on now, I was just going to buy cash. And then Canon said, hey, you know, we have a lease program. I said, I want to pay interest. It, it's 0%. I go, 0%? It's 0%. As my accountant would say, that's free money. See, so instead of taking my $10,000 where I'm making 4 or 5% on it per year, I can just have Canon lend me the money and I don't pay any interest to them. So that $10,000 is left in, uh, you know, just a bond making 4%, whatever. So it's 4, 400 bucks a year, but, you know, it's a three-year lease uh, at 0%. I'm paying Canon 0%. Uh, meantime, I make $1,600 on my 10000 as opposed to buying it cash, giving it to Canon, where I'm making nothing on my 10000 So that was a situation where Canon, the camera company, they actually uh, financed my business for free at 0% interest rate. Free money, as the accountant said. So there's an example where I used a vendor, a supplier. I used their uh, credit to finance my business. So... Uh, you're going into debt, but at least the debt in that situation is not costing you interest. I've seen some people where they bought this camera, or some guys online, they bought this camera, this very camera, they put it on their credit card. It's unbelievable. And they're paying like 20% interest. It's unbelievable. They, they ended up paying like an extra three, dollars $4,000 for the camera, just in interest payments, right? Think about it. You spend $10,000 on a camera or whatever you spend it on, to start your business and your interest rates are 20%. It could be 25%. Let's say it's 20%. It'll be generous. You're paying $2,000 a year just in interest. It's crazy. You don't do that. So there you go. There, those are the options. A, um, get a personal loan so your interest is not so high. A personal loan, your interest could be like 4 or 5%, 6%, as opposed to 20, 28% with a credit card. Number two, the best option, especially if you're first starting out, find an experienced entrepreneur, investor. Even if they take 75% of the company, most will say, well, we'll go 50-50 if they like the idea. Not only will you, don't, you won't be risking your cash, which you can't afford to lose, I'm assuming, uh, you'll be getting a good, uh, a good partner, somebody who can help you and speed the process up. Number three, you can see if the vendor, the supplier, maybe they got some low interest or zero interest options where you can get the equipment from them and not have to pay interest. So those are a few options for you. 
And uh, that being said, I'd be very, very reluctant to jump into debt. One of the biggest mistakes people make when they start a business to reiterate is they jump into debt. They jump into debt assuming that, you know, hey, you know, my idea is fantastic. Your idea is not fantastic. It might be fantastic, but if you're like everybody else in this world, including Steve Jobs and Bill Gates and a whole bunch of other super successful crazy people, uh, their first idea was no good. So you need, uh, you need to have some breathing space. So you don't want to load yourself up with debt that you have to pay back without having a, a business model that actually works. When you have a business that's functioning, it's got cash flow, it's making money, and you know that every month I'm going to be making 50000 a month or 100000 or, or 5000 a month, whatever it is, you know, at least you got money coming in, so it's more justifiable to buy things, right? It's more justifiable to buy things. And anyway, so if you like this style of business video, let me know in the comments. I know there's a lot of people watch, thousands of people watch the videos, sometimes only a few thousand. Sometimes there's a million people watch the videos. Okay, it happened once. But if you do like the videos, please comment. It's good for Google. It's good for me. It tells me that you're interested in this type of stuff. You're interested in the style. And uh, share it. Share it on social. That helps me out as well. Again, your interaction with the content tells me which direction I'm going to go in in terms of this coming year. I'm chomping at the bit to up the video game, up the output, and to create structured uh, series, if you will, on different subjects. One thing I'm definitely gonna do is, I'm just calling it right now nerd news, where I'm gonna go over the programming development news of the day, and I'm gonna read, tell you what it is, and give you my commentaries based on my 25 years experience as a coder. I might do the same thing with business. I don't know. We'll have to see what the reaction is. So you guys tell me. So if you never comment, comment. If you never give me a like, give me a like. If you don't like my comment, show your disdain. Give me two dislikes. Oh, by the way, when you see, you see me shaking like this, I don't have a, a disease. I have drummer's leg. I have this habit of, uh, of always uh, hitting, hitting the bass drum with my, uh, with my legs. That's why you see me drumming like this. Uh, it's, it's nervous. Maybe it's kicking, kicking leg. I used to be a, I used to do a lot of uh, taekwondo. I did muay thai. I did a lot of kicking in the day. So uh, it's just it's, it's in the nervous system. So don't worry. If you see me twitching like this, that means I'm actually pretty happy. Uh, yeah, that's it for now. Bye bye. I am amazed at how quickly the weather changed. Look at it, look at it outside. The footage from just before was literally from five minutes ago. What a difference five, well, okay, maybe 10 minutes can make, okay? Eh?